get you 8,000. This is a stone I've had for years, and it's about the same as that eight. It feels the same. It might be like a five, but it's dirty. It's got dirt on it. I have to clean it. Anyway, these are Mori Hay wet stones. And they're splash and go type. They don't have to be soaked. This is a King 8000. That I don't know what it is. And I got this little thing to put on my knife blade because all my life sharpening knives, I've just kind of guesstimated 15 degrees and that's 15. So I'm just wanna clip it on the knife and see where it's at. I don't think I need to use it all the time. And this is a rust remover, which might come in handy. That's a set of knives, global Japanese knives. I've had those for 30 years. <laughs> and I need to put a edge on these. I sharpened them about six months ago and they're getting dull. This no longer will slice into a tomato skin unless I poke a hole in it with the tip. That's Japanese specific for chicken boning. And this is a knife I love. This one was expensive, but you can see the blacksmith detail. Now this carbon steel, but the way this guy finished it, it doesn't really rust much. Now this is the one, I just bought it six or eight months ago and I oiled it and put it away and then when I pulled it out, I looked at it and it's got a lot of rusty tarnish on it. And that goes with that. I've got a set of three of these this is Ninohi Ninox. These are crazy expensive now. It's like the chef's knife I've got. It's, I forget what it is. It's 10 inch or a little bit more. I looked on the website to buy these and they were like $500 for the big one. It's crazy. None of these are cheap. This one this one, this one, this one, the Chinese one, it's not expensive. And it's a nice knife. That's why I'm thinking, you know what? This is a specialty knife for boning chicken. You can bone a chicken with this knife. You can bone a chicken with that. Now this is a Deva. So is this, they're two different styles. You can see how heavy that is. That's for doing fish. Same thing here. This a little bit smaller, which I kind of like. Anyway, I've got to do some work on that blade. You can see I got my work cut out for me. Now this is my rig for down in the shop. I bought this cheap stainless, which isn't exactly stainless, is it? Cheap sink. And I take the miter saw station out of here and I just pop this in. Uh, hold it in place with a couple chopsticks and stuff. Now this is the first sink bridge I built and I made it specifically to fit this sink and it does, it's not going to move. This whole thing is very steady. These tables are heavy so nothing's going to move here when I'm working. But you know, I just wanted to throw something together that would give me some practice. I bought a bamboo cutting board, sawed it in half, and then I filled. It's not solid, it's empty, but it's got little pieces of wood that run across. So I filled all the gaps with wood filler. And, and it's not adjustable. 
so it's made to fit these stones. The stone will fit right in there and fit pretty tight. Anyway, yeah, I just, you can see I just screwed the legs in place and this leg, I screwed the stone stop into the leg. So it's solid and I've used it before and of course it gets all crapped up with gray shit when you're working on the blades, but it washes right off and I hang it up on the wall. Now that's the thing from Roger Musson's book, a dishing gauge. I built it according to his design, but I improvised the, the feet on it. Those are pieces of plexiglass and I double thicknessed them. Yeah. That's a Roger Musson idea. It works just fine. Anyway, I gotta do some work.